Number one, memorize the cross edge. So I've solved first two centers and now I'm going on to the white cross edges. It's very easy to pause during the step because the pieces could be anywhere. So make sure that when you start building a cross edge, you don't ever have to look at it again. That way you can turn your focus to other places where more pieces could be. So here's an example. I have white and green, so I'm going to solve these two. And now I'm going to memorize that white is on the front or I'm going to memorize that they're on the right side. So then I have this one. So once I look away, what a lot of people will do here is just kind of check what it was again and then know to pair it either here or here, which is the correct side. But since I've already memorized it's on the right side, then I can just see this one and then move it to the left side. Then when I join them together, I can insert it into the cross without looking anymore. And that's like this. So it also helps to know the orientation of the pieces because if I were to do a D move, that wouldn't work. And I have to remember that white's over here. So instead of memorizing left or right, I think I usually go for where the white color is. And the reason for that is because if you pair up two outer edges, then there is no left or right. There's a middle left to go, which means you have to know where white is on the front or the bottom in order to put the last one in without looking. So once I cube rotate away and look for the other piece, I remember that the other ones have white on the bottom. So I'm going to orient it this way so it's white closer to me rather than like on the other side. Then I can just join them all together without looking. Number two, minimize face switching during centers. During centers, face switching is because you have the cross here, then you can only turn the U face. If you wanna turn the front, you can't do that. Instead, you have to turn it like this in order to make it the U face. So obviously the problem with face switching is you add extra moves trying to change which one's on the U face, which means you wanna avoid this as much as possible. A simple example is we have the red here, we're trying to make the bar and we have these to pair up to make the bar. So after pairing them up, make sure you don't go down this way because then the only way you can insert it is by then switching to this face to turn the top and then doing this. Instead, the better thing to do is to move it into the top and then cancel into the next part, which is inserting it into the bottom. So then the whole thing would look like this, move them together, get this one one more higher, and then put it all in at once. So here's another example that's a little bit harder. So these don't pair up perfectly, but here what you could do is this, and then from here you have the previous case, but it can be a little bit slower to switch between these moves and these moves as you have to move your thumbs over a bit. So I think a better solution here would be to do completely R and U to pair these. And you should know all of these if you know how to do like your last two centers last bar properly because all of those solutions are R U. So here is how you would solve this one. And now once you've paired it up, then you insert it the same way as before, which is like this, move it up one more so you can get it in all at once. Now that exact idea only applies if everything was on the right side, because you can't solve this case with just R and U. That doesn't even make sense. It doesn't touch this piece. So for a case like this, we notice that it pairs like that. And then we can do one face switch here and then solve it from here, which involves holding these two layers now and then inserting into here. And you can hold the same layers as before, which makes it a little bit more efficient and do this. And if you have this case, which is just, it's on the other side from the right side, so you can't solve it this way, and it's not the one that just pairs up properly right away, then what you can do is this. Slice move to move this one up and hide the bar, and then move it into the right spot, and undo the slice move with two moves. Then you can just insert it into the bottom normally. Number three, influence centers during double turns. So first of all, similar example to before, this red one, this red one, how is it solved? With RU, so like this. Okay, so now once you pair them all up, if you come back like this, there's not much of a guarantee of what happens here, especially if you just see this. Like if I saw a bar, I would say, that's great. I don't really need to do anything in particular, but if I see this, then I kind of want to make it something better. So here, what you could do is on the way down from the R2, take a look at what you have here and just realign it to something better. So here, I would prefer it if this little bar was right here. So often, instead of just looking, you want to predict these things in advance. So here, I'm going to pair up red and insert it here. So here, I have to memorize what's on the right side that I'm moving out of the front face. In other words, just this blue one, because I'm trying to solve blue. So I remember blues at the top right, then as I pair them together, then I'm going to come down and it's going to have a blue line here because there was a blue at the top right, which means after this, I want to make sure I know exactly how I'm going to solve the last center. So here are two pretty much equally good options. Since I have this line here, I wanna make either a T or an H. And both of these are like equally good cases. So when I come back down, I knew I had a line here and I also knew since there's no blue on this one. So I could come down with the bar or the single edge center, but the worst thing I could do is come down with this one. So that's why you wanna predict in advance so you don't do the wrong U-turn. So for example, if you came down with the edge center, then you can solve it like this. And if you came down with the full bar, then you can solve it like this. Number four, avoid D moves during edges. 
So to pair up this and this, the best way is not with D prime because my hands move like that. Instead, the best way to do it is Y U prime. I recommend practicing this to get used to doing it as much as possible, but make sure you know the limit of when you can't do this. So it doesn't really make sense to hold the bottom layer and do stuff like this. Although I, I guess if you could, that's fine. But usually the second lowest layer is the lowest I'll go. So I don't think you can always avoid D moves, but if you think you need it, then try to think of a way around it. So I'll go through a few examples of doing this. So I'll put these two together and I noticed that broke yellow green here. So I'll then insert yellow green here. And then I'll put them together like this and this. So yellow green's back here. Now I don't have to rotate to the front to take it out, of course. I can just take it out from the back. So then here, red, blue, I can insert it into here and be familiar with how these go into the back. So I know it's gonna end up on top like this. Okay, now I can put these together, but I don't have a flipping algorithm for the back. So instead of doing a flipping algorithm, you just take it out and put it in the front. And then I can join them all together. Now let's say it looked like this instead. So you normally use a right-handed flipping algorithm. So once you do this and you can't flip the back right edge, you could actually just add one more move here and make it a front right edge. And then you can do the flipping algorithm and then pair them all together. Okay, so I'll do two more edges here. So I have green and orange, so I can put one in here and one in here. I'll join them together, of course, with a wide U. And then I have yellow and red. So insert this one why do you? And then for this one, I can put it over here or even put it into the back, which has a regrip, but keeps it as R moves. So it depends on your preference. And then that's it for the centers here. Am I going to align the cross like this? No, again, just U moves whenever possible. So U prime to correct the bottom and then U two to correct the top. Number five, should you solve F2 all pairs before last four edges? So when you get to the last four edges in my older videos, I talked about specifically the method called Yao5, and that is when you do solve two F2L pairs at this step. And that requires that you have at least two F2L edges solved during the first four edges, which you may not have done. And see here I have two yellows, it could have been three or four. I think it's better to be flexible with what edges you do earlier, just depending on what's lucky. And here again, you just do whatever is lucky. So you always have good cases. So for this step, having seen this right away, I would probably just solve that as a back slot to make it easy. I'm not even sure because this is not a great case, but let's just do it anyway. So then I don't immediately see what my next pair is gonna be. I saw this corner and I saw this edge and those don't pair, it's not this one. I'm not gonna bother looking for the corner. I mean, I kind of know it's here now, but I'm not gonna worry about it. Instead, I'm just going to insert uh, optimally a yellow edge into the back. That way this one gets to float around and I can solve it later. So I'll just insert yellow into the back. And then next I have two front slots that I can start pairing with. Or if you did get a lucky case, you can just solve that one instead. And if you have two opposite solved diagonal slots, you'd rather have just two back slots. But if this does happen, then you can move this whole square into the back. And then you have two open front slots that you can work on the last edges with. And after you're done with those edges, then you undo. Or if you were facing this side, remember, just take the front slot and move it to the back. So that all only applies if you have easy F2 cases. In my opinion, if they aren't easy or you don't see them right away, then just immediately go into the last four edges, which means you can like take out two edges on the side and then start working on the edges here. As for how this is done using cycles, it's in the part after Yao and Hoya in this video. Number six, turn fast and look ahead. You may have heard the phrase for three by three, turn slow and look ahead. That's because if you turn at your fastest, you can't see pieces. But on seven by seven and six and five, you can see pieces even if you're turning really fast. So the turn fast part doesn't really work unless you've lubed your cube really well, especially for seven by seven and six by six. A lot of people like to solve bigger cubes at a more relaxed pace because it takes a while and you feel like look ahead is super important. But if you actually try turning at your fastest, you may notice a huge difference. Maybe you were always faster than you thought you were. Now for the look ahead part, how to make it easier is to make sure you're facing sides that let you see more. So here I have part of a bar and I have this middle bar. So I'm going to do this and then immediately rotate this way and find pieces. So I've already memorized where this is and I'm not gonna look at it anymore as I make it. So I can have this one and I have this one. So often a lot of people from here would actually just put this one in like this. And that's actually kind of like two wasted moves because you don't get to look at what the next thing is because from here, anything on this side is hard to use. Anything on the bottom you can't see. Anything on the top, well, you already knew there was one thing here only. But remember, you can do that exact same move facing a different side. So if you have a choice of rotation, just rotate so the bar is as far away as possible. And then you can do this, move that one in as well. And then here, maybe I wanna work on this one next. I don't know, so I'll just like move it here. I'll rotate this and I'll insert the bar up from here. 
Notice how I never had to go look at that bar again because I knew where it was and I knew how to solve it. So it's really important to try and keep using your visual memory for spaces you're not looking at because if you keep looking at it again, it's like adding another step and you really need time to process all the things up here without thinking about what you did before. So for Big Cube Look Ahead, the ultimate goal is to be able to just look at each thing once and never really have to look at where it is again as long as it's what you're currently solving. All right, so that's it for this video. And if you wanna see example solves with me using Yao, then I have example solves on the end screen here for me doing all the Big Cubes. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.